G'day guys, it's Bren Carter back again, and we have a very, very new, exciting, and fresh new release to be able to talk about in a second. All right, guys, some of you in Australia would probably have noticed that uh, we've been yelling pretty loudly about a very new release and a very ex exciting release for us uh, personally. It's been a bit of a work in progress for the last four or five years. To actually arrive here, we're actually totally, totally stoked. For our friends overseas, uh, a lot of you will actually be seeing uh, more and more of these wines across the borders and uh, into your countries. And I I'm really excited to actually see what you guys think of this. So I'm a huge fan. I'm an absolutely huge fan of wines that really speak of where they come from. I think that kind of goes without saying. All great wines are really crafted in a way, in a manner. You'd want to consume them right next to where the vines actually grow. Burgundy, for example, love Burgundy. Tastes amazing in Burgundy. Tastes amazing everywhere else, but particularly amazing in Burgundy. It's the same thing you could probably say about Barolo, or you could say the same thing about Bordeaux even. I'd actually argue that there's a lot of Australian wines that perhaps aren't really well suited to our climate, considering we are uh, one of the hottest, driest places to be growing grapes. So our summers here are worldwide famous for being very, very warm and typically very, very dry. Uh, I do find fascinating that Australia is a, a majority red wine making nation uh, and typically those wines that we're famous for are very high octane so uh, they will typically be high alcohol, high extract, high tannin, high oak especially when they're crafted from almost like desert like areas I wouldn't really want to drink them there I would probably want to drink them overseas and indeed that's why we are a majority export industry. For this particular more artistic project, we wanted to craft a wine that really spoke to, firstly spoke to, to ourselves, we're one of the younger populaces that, that drink wine, but also really spoke to the place that we're, it really came from and how we would actually consume it. I would love to consume this wine by the beach. Unfortunately, grapevines don't really grow well in the beach. So to find a similar climate, we decided to actually go into the desert. Now this particular variety that it's made from is called Nero Davila, or just Nero for short. Uh, for us in Australia, Nero for short just works perfectly fine. Nero is an incredible variety. It has a very, very particular uh, adaptation that allows it to exist very well in drought-like conditions. This is because it is actually originally from the southern part of Sicily facing Africa. So in particular, this has a great affinity for more hot and dry climates. And it has found a very, very, very great home in a place called the Riverland. The Riverland in Australia is um, it's probably known for bulk wine production uh, and, and high irrigated vineyards, uh, I'm going to say, aren't necessarily sustainable. Here, we're actually finding a viable, sustainable alternative whilst being able to craft it in a way that requires no things like no inoculations, no um, no acidification, uh, and in most Im important, no water or, or very minimal amounts of water, vastly less than, than uh, other varieties that are planted in the same place. Um, here we decided to blend in a little bit of Zabibo, uh, which is very, very, very voluminous in its aroma and uh, you know very, very bright and fresh and tight. And, and this is very much mimicked in this particular wine, uh, where freshness uh, in terms of a red wine is, is what's uh, absolutely critical. And if you have a look, I'm not sure if this really shows up um, how, um, how light the wine actually is. This is a region that's quite famous for making very rich, heavy extracted reds. Uh, so to craft something like this with minimal draw on natural resources whilst having something that is super refreshing, that's something that's super appealing to us. And of course, if you watched any of these other videos, you know how much we absolutely adore acidity, particularly a natural acid line. An acid line that doesn't have these sort of big peaks and troughs, but something that's really well integrated and, and, and fruity and fun and um, very juicy on the palate. The addition of Zabibo here sort of elevates and beyond elevates, smashes the roof off the aroma, driven with things like peaches and apricot. And the acid line just drives that all the way through the palate, real what we call sloshy tannin. They're pretty much almost non-existent. Guys, I'd like to introduce you to Fresh AF. <laughs> 